We are continuing to look at aggregate expenditures, total spending in the economy, and we've been breaking it down into C plus I plus G plus X minus I M. So we've looked at C and I and G, so now let's look at X minus I M. So we're looking at net exports, or exports minus imports. Let's first look at exports and imports separately, and then we'll look at the net exports. So here we have an example, and here we have our exports and our imports, and here we have national income. So when national income is zero, exports are 100. When national income is 100, exports are 100. So notice how exports don't change with the level of national income. If we were to graph our exports as a function of income, income is on the horizontal and exports are on the vertical. So when national income is zero, exports are 100. And when income is 100, exports are 100. All the way until when income is 800, exports are still 100. So if we connect these dots, we should end up with a straight line. We can find a formula for exports, just like we've been finding a formula for our other types of spending autonomous plus induced. Notice that when income is zero, export spending is 100. So we have autonomous export spending of 100. As income increases, export spending does not change, so we have no induced spending. Export spending is completely autonomous of our national income. This is because export spending is when goods are going out of our country and money is coming in. Well, the money is coming in from people in other countries. So their spending on our goods does not depend on our income, it depends on their income. So export spending will be completely autonomous. Now let's look at import spending. Import spending is when we bring the goods in and the money is going out. So this is done by us in our economy. So when income is zero, import spending is 40. When income is 100, import spending is 50. And we can continue to plot what's happening to imports as we increase income. Notice that import spending increases. So here we go and all the way until income is 800, then our imports are 120. So we can connect our dots for our import as we go from 40 to 120. So hopefully your line's a bit straighter than mine. Uh, here we have our formula for imports. Okay. And it is autonomous plus induced. So notice that when income is zero, uh, we have $40 worth of imports. And that's because not everything we make here in Canada or wherever you are satisfies your basic necessity. So if we all had no income, we would still need some basic things like gas in our uh, gas tank in our car to get to, to get to those job interviews, or we would need food to survive. So in Canada, for example, in the middle of winter, we don't have any fresh fruit. We're importing it all. We have our gas gets refined primarily in the U.S., and so we are importing gasoline. Even if we have no job, we still have to get to job interviews, and so you're importing some gas. So our imports are autonomous. Here in this example, it's $40. And then as our income increases, our imports increase as well. So we need to calculate the slope. What is happening to imports as our income increases. So we're looking at the change in imports when we change income. So our imports go from 40 to 120. So 120 minus 40 
divided by, and our income goes from 0 to 800, so 800 minus 0. And so that difference then is 80 divided by 800, and so we have 0.1. Our slope here is 0.1. This 0.1 has a name. This 0.1 is called the marginal propensity to import or MPM. It tells us for every additional dollar of income, 10 cents is going to imports. So our import function is 40 plus 0.1y. Notice that at low levels of income, like income of 200, the amount we are exporting is more than the amount we are importing. X is more than imports. And if we are exporting more than we are importing, then the amount of money coming in from selling goods to foreigners is more than the amount of money leaving. And so we have a trade surplus. At higher levels of income, if the only thing we change is income, ceteris paribus, then exports aren't changing, but at higher levels of income, we are importing more goods, which means more money is leaving the country. So here we have our imports are more than our exports, so imports up here, exports up here, which means that more money is leaving the country than is coming in, which gives us a trade deficit. Okay. So at high levels of income, we are more likely to have a trade deficit. At low levels of income, we're more likely to have a trade surplus. Now we can take our exports and our imports and we can combine them into net exports. So let's actually take our export formula. So here we have exports was equal to 100. We have imports, which is equal to, let's go back, we found the formula, was 40 plus 0.1y. So to find the formula for net exports, which is exports minus imports, we take our exports formula and subtract the formula for imports. Now whenever you subtract an entire formula, this negative that's out front needs to be applied to every part of the formula. So 100 minus 40 minus 0.1y. So, you, so notice how this negative gets distributed and it's in front of both parts. We can then consolidate this formula by taking all the numbers that don't have y in them, so the 100 minus 40, and turning that into 60. So we have 60 minus 0.1y. What this tells us is that when income is zero, our autonomous net exports are 60. So if income is zero, we're bringing in $60 more into our economy than is leaving. As our income increases, we have money that is leaving our country. So this negative here in front of the point one tells you that money is leaving our economy as our income increases. This point one that you see here is the MPM. It's just negative now. Why is it negative? Well, for every dollar of income, we are importing 10 cents worth, and that 10 cents is leaving our country. 